Uh, so, uh, mm, I guess I can skip, skip this one. So, uh, what is sudo? Uh, I asked these questions quite a, uh, from quite a lot of people in the past uh, two years uh, since I'm working with Todd. Uh, and uh, I get very different answers depending on the experience of the person and the size of the environment where uh, one is working. So uh, the most common answer was it's a tool to complicate life. The, this was coming especially from desktop users. Uh, but even season system administrators tell me that, well, it's just a prefix for the administrative commands. Only very few are aware of the uh, advanced feature of sudo. So what is sudo uh, according to the sudo website? Uh, sudo allows a system administrator and uh, uh, to delegate authority by giving certain users the ability to run some comments as root or another user while providing an audit trail of the comments and their arguments. So uh, as uh, you can see and you will see it's a lot more than just a prefix. Well, if we can believe to XKCV, uh, it can even make you a sandwich. Just make sure that when you ask for it, you use the sudo prefix. So let's go back to basics. Uh, sudo uh, stores its configuration in, in, in the etc sudoers file. When you uh, take a look at it, you will see uh, that uh, by default, it will have a single rule in it. Uh, that the members of the wheel group uh, can do practically anything on your hosts. But even if this uh, simple uh, rule is useful, as uh, if you use sudo uh, to uh, run commands, you will see who did what on your system. The columns here mean that who on which hosts uh, a switch user and uh, which comments are allowed to be run. Of course, when uh, it's more than just you and your best friend administering a machine, uh, you will start to fine tune uh, permissions. And uh, you can uh, create uh, lists uh, instead of any of the uh, columns above. So you can use a list of uh, users, a list of host names, a list of comments, and so on. Uh, but quickly, you will uh, realize that you are copying, copying and pasting huge uh, lists around in your configuration, uh, which can be quite error-prone. Just imagine that uh, you have a problem with one of your sysadmins, and you remove most of the uh, most of the appearances of his username uh, from the sudoers file, but not everything. And uh, it's quite easy, easily possible that uh, the that sysadmin can come back using that command as a backdoor. Uh, this is where aliases can can, can handy, uh, as they can uh, greatly simplify uh, the configuration and make make it less less error prone. Instead of uh, copying, copying and pasting lists around in your config, uh, you can create aliases and use the aliases in your configuration. Here are a few examples, a host alias for web servers, user alias for administrators, and a command alias for rebooting a system. Uh, sudo has a huge set of defaults. Uh, inside. Uh, most of these make uh, perfect sense, but sometimes you want to override the default behavior. You can use that, you can mm, do that using the uh, default statements in your sudoers file. Here we override the secure path, the uh, which environment variables are kept from the user, and we disable insults uh, for all users. Uh, these defaults can also be uh, user or host specific, like uh, at the bottom of the screen, it's uh, we uh, enable insults for members of the wheel group. Uh, so what are insults? Uh, they are fun, but not always politically correct. So uh, 
for the past couple of years, uh, they are disabled by default. Uh, these are uh, some uh, fun uh, error messages when someone uh, mistypes a password. Mm -hmm. Sysadmin humor. Mm -hmm. You can also do uh, digest verification uh, using the uh, sudoers file. Uh, and this way you can prevent modified binaries from running. Uh, these uh, digest lists are quite difficult to maintain. On the other hand, you can uh, create an additional layer of protection uh, when you don't trust uh, your users at all. You can also do session recording it's to do. This is especially important if you need to hand out uh, shell access to your users, but it, it can come handy uh, for other users to use this as, as well. This way you can play back, record everything what is happening on the terminal and play it back as well, just like a movie. The recording itself is quite difficult to modify as it's not uh, clear text. On the other hand, uh, easy to delete especially when you give uh, shell access to the user, but stay tuned. Sudo 1.8 uh, introduced a plugin-based architecture, uh, which means that uh, most of its features are uh, implemented as plugins, uh, and you can uh, replace or extend this functionality using your uh, own plugins. There are both open source and commercial plugins uh, available for Sudo. Here I want to show you uh, the sudo pair. It's a, a nice plugin uh, to uh, make sure that no user can enter uh, comments uh, on their own. So there uh, needs to be someone approving uh, sessions. Uh, you can even follow what is happening on screen. Uh, and uh, terminate the session uh, if you see some uh, suspicious activity. The downside of this plugin is that it's developed in Rust, which means that it's, it can be difficult to compile it and uh, even more difficult to distribute it. Let me show you a quick demo of it. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, uh, there is uh, root user logged in and uh, we, we will approve or reject sessions from that window and on the right hand side window uh, I will run sudo and uh, in this case try to uh, run a shell. I enter my password and you see that uh, a number, uh, two numbers are printed here. One is the user ID, another is the process ID and the approval needs to enter these two numbers. And uh, we can easily re reject it. And you see, not, uh, the user never uh, executed anything, even with the authentication. So let's try this again. This time we approve it. And as you can see, anything I enter on the right hand side is mirrored uh, on the left hand side. Now, uh, uh, let's try to do something nasty, just delete everything on my laptop. But luckily, uh, the guy on the right, uh, left hand side supervising uh, this sudo session is aware and quickly terminates the session. Now, when I hit enter on the right hand side, nothing happens. Well, uh, I can see that uh, I'm kicked out from this to do session. So my uh, laptop is, uh, my laptop survived and I, I, I can continue my talk. Uh, let's talk a bit about configuring sudo. Uh, the configuration itself is a plain text file uh, at etc sudoers. On the other hand, you uh, should edit it using VI sudo, as it also does some syntax checking for you. Uh, if you don't like VI, you can change it to any other editor. Uh, 
just uh, be aware that uh, a syntactically correct configuration doesn't mean that uh, you can execute anything uh, through sudo. So when you are experimenting with sudo, make sure that you have a backdoor. I mean, you know the root password. Yes, even on Ubuntu. Otherwise, you have to uh, break your own machine. Uh, the sudo reads the configuration uh, from the top uh, from top to the bottom, and uh, always the last setting wins. So, which means that you should start with uh, generic settings and uh, add exceptions uh, at the end of uh, around at the end of uh, the file. Here is a sample configuration. You see that there are a huge uh, set of default statements overriding many parameters. Then uh, we have the usual root and members of the wheel group can do everything. Then uh, uh, we have uh, a default statement uh, enabling insults for the members of the wheel group. and. Uh, disabling insults for everyone else. On the last line, we uh, enable session recording. Well, that was a very common mistake on the previous slide. Uh, if you take a look at it, you will see uh, that first we uh, enable insults for the wheel group but always the last setting wins, and there we uh, disable insults for everyone, which means that if you want insults for the uh, wheel group, have some uh, sysadmin humor, then you need to reverse the order of these two lines. Uh, once you have more than a single machine, you most likely want to do some central management of your configuration. Uh, Puppet, Puppet, Ansible, uh, Chef, Salt, whatever you want to use, uh, supports uh, sudo. Uh, the problem with uh, this is that uh, change, changes are not done in real time and uh, users can uh, modify configuration files locally. It, it can be also be error prone if you if you uh, configure something uh, centrally, which is not yet su supported by the version of sudo you have locally. Another possibility is storing your uh, sudo configuration in LDAP. Uh, this has the advantage that uh, settings are propagated in real time. They cannot be modified locally. On the other hand, there are quite a few limitations like uh, aliases don't work uh, through LDAP. And if, you, uh, if your network is broken and you cannot reach LDAP, you cannot use sudo either. An often overlooked uh, feature of sudo is logging and alerting. Sudo itself can create uh, email alerts. And uh, everything is logged uh, to syslog by sudo. Just make sure that your uh, syslog messages are collected centrally, otherwise it's quite easy to delete them if you uh, give your users uh, shell access. If you use syslogng to collect uh, sudo log messages, uh, then uh, these are automatically parsed and you can easily uh, push alerts to uh, Slack, uh, Splunk or uh, different cloud services for real-time alerting uh, from your system. Uh, if you are lucky, you will never have to use debug uh, log messages. Uh, these are used to debug uh, rules when uh, you uh, don't understand why something doesn't work. And it's, it, it is also used to report problems. Uh, let me talk a few words about uh, syslogng, how to create an alert, alert to Slack. Uh, so what is, first of all, what is syslogng? It's an enhanced logging daemon with a strong focus on portability and high performance central log collection. Uh, the configuration uh, is simple and logical, even if it doesn't really look so at first sight and uh, often not even at second sight. Uh, it is using a pipeline model. There are uh, different building blocks, sources, destination filters, and so on. And uh, these uh, building blocks are connected uh, together uh, 
into a pipeline using block statements. Here is how uh, the configuration looks like. We always start with the version number. Uh, some uh, in general options at the beginning. Then you can see building blocks here. Uh, source source collecting local messages, a file destination, and a filter uh, typical for varlog messages. And at the bottom of the screen, there is a log statement connecting uh, all of these building blocks together. Uh, next, we're going to uh, creating an alert uh, from sudo logs to uh, uh, Slack. First, we uh, have a filter uh, filtering on sudo logs. Then we have two destinations. The first one just for debugging. Uh, the second one is sending uh, log messages uh, to Slack. Uh, And uh, here we have a log statement. Note that we don't have a, a separate parser for sudo log messages defined as uh, syslogng is parsing these logs by default and creates name value pairs uh, from uh, sudo logs. So we use the same source as for var log messages, uh, use the sudo filter. And here we have a, a filter matching on my username and uh, we uh, send uh, logs to a local file and also to Slack. And here uh, you can see uh, the results. All of the commands are executed through sudo are uh, streamed in real time to Slack. So uh, what is new in uh, sudo 1.9? It introduced the recording service, so uh, sudo can collect IOLOGs centrally. Uh, there are two new APIs, the audit plugin and the approval plugin. Uh, you can extend sudo uh, plugins written in Python, and uh, you can uh, configure change root and change working directory uh, for sudo. So what is the recording service? Uh, using the recording service, you can uh, collect IOLOX centrally. What, are, what is IOLOX? Practically, it's the same data as in session uh, recording. So any input and output uh, uh, from the terminal. These log messages can be streamed in real time uh, to a central uh, log collector and uh, store their uh, Security. Why uh, this is important? First of all, it's uh, convenient. Uh, instead of logging into each of your hosts, you can uh, browse uh, session recordings centrally. It also means availability. Even if your sending machine is down, you can uh, check your logs what happened. And it's also security, as uh, when a machine is hacked, uh, often the first uh, first thing is removing. Uh, logs, including uh, logs from sudo. But if you have collected your logs centrally, then uh, you can check how uh, your machine was hacked. Uh, the audit plugin is brand new in sudo 1.9. It's not a user visible feature, meaning that you cannot uh, configure it from the sudo rs file, but it's an API to access any kind of uh, sudo logs. Uh, you can use it to debug uh, sudo and also uh, send uh, logs uh, to other places than syslog directly from sudo, like logging or alerting to Elasticsearch, different cloud providers, it's very useful uh, from Python. The next one is the uh, audit uh, plugin, which enables you uh, session approval without uh, replacing uh, the uh, basic policy plugin uh, using a sudo rs file. Uh, it, uh, these plugins only run uh, after uh, 
the basic policy plugin uh, already uh, approved the session and you can have uh, eight uh, di different uh, approval plugins. Uh, as, uh, with the um, looking uh, API, uh, it, uh, it uh, can be used from Python and you can easily connect sudo with ticketing system. For example, allow a session only uh, when there is an open ticket for it or uh, limit uh, access to sudo to working hours or working days. Uh, I already mentioned Python support a couple of times. Uh, it means that you can extend uh, sudo using Python scripts. It, it is using the very same APIs as the C plugins. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is no need for a dedicated development environment or uh, compiling plugins. And uh, it, the development is often uh, a lot quicker uh, and uh, you can easily distribute uh, the, uh, these Python scripts uh, using your uh, configuration management applications. I will show you a couple of uh, Python scripts here. Uh, the different APIs uh, scripts and uh, how they work. And I will be demo one of the, those. Uh, the policy plugin of sudo uh, decides who can do what on a system. Only one of these policy plugins uh, is allowed. Uh, the default uh, plugin is using uh, is, is the one implementing the sudo -ers file. So it's quite an important one but still you can replace it with your own code. Uh, just make sure that you have uh, other means to access uh, your machines. Uh, uh, as, uh, the policy on the next slide is uh, very simple. Only the command ID is allowed and nothing else. Here is the code. Uh, as you can see, we started by importing sudo uh, it's not a module on, on your hard drive, but uh, something implemented within the uh, Python plugin of sudo. And uh, there is a mandatory method called uh, check policy. Uh, and uh, here within this, we check uh, if uh, the name of the command uh, is different from ID. If it's different, then uh, we uh, create an error message and reject the uh, sudo session. Uh, otherwise, uh, we uh, prepare the environment and return it to sudo so the application can run. Here is a screenshot of this. Mm, sudo ls uh, returns with, a, mm, with, a, with the error message we just defined. Uh, sudo id uh, shows you uh, that it's running with proper root privileges. Uh, the IOLOX API uh, gives you access to input and output uh, from user sessions. Uh, uh, I will uh, show you a couple of Python examples. Uh, the first one uh, breaks a connection if a given text appears on screen. The next one, uh, if uh, rm minus F, uh, fr is uh, appearing on the command line. And uh, the last, last one is asking uh, for the reason of the session. Of course, all of these uh, examples are just to uh, show you what is possible, but uh, no, not production ready code. Uh, you can easily uh, uh, work around uh, these guards. And uh, so uh, it's not foolproof, it's just uh, proof of concept. Uh, the first uh, example is the uh, simplest. Uh, all it does is checking if uh, the text my secret appears uh, on the screen. 
and in this uh, in this case uh, the session is broken uh, with an error message that don't look at my secret let me show you how it works uh, on the left hand side i'm logged in as root and uh, th there is a directory called do not enter which has a single file in it called my secret uh, now I switch to the uh, right hand side and uh, start sudo uh, uh, with a shell. I enter my password. Uh, then I change to the root directory, list it. Oh, and there is a uh, directory, do not enter. It must be pretty interesting. Let's check what's in it. But uh, even uh, before uh, my secret could appear on my screen, uh, sudo detected, uh, the Python script detected uh, the text and uh, wrote a sudo session. The next example is a bit more complex. Uh, it's trying to reproduce what the user is typing on the command line and uh, break the session if rl-fr is uh, typed on screen. Of course, if you uh, enter a, a, an extra space or reverse the order of options or whatever, it's easy to work it around. It's nothing foolproof. Uh, it's just to show you that such a thing is possible. And here is how it looks uh, when you try it. You start sudo, uh, then start entering rl-fr. But before r could uh, be displayed on screen, uh, the session is uh, broken. The last iOx example uh, is uh, a conversation with the user. It is asking uh, the reason why a um, session is started. Uh, there are uh, multiple possibilities how it works. Uh, you can uh, echo back on screen what is typed, but uh, if you want to keep uh, the reason in, in secret, uh, for example, someone is standing behind you, but you still want to uh, explain why you are running this, uh, you can uh, enter a secret reason which is masked as you see on this screen. So here is a public reason and uh, this one is not shown on the screen. Uh, the last API is the group plugin API. Uh, it allows uh, to do non-Unix group lookups. Uh, this way, uh, for example, you can uh, integrate uh, mm, sudo with uh, Active Directory or uh, just a simple workaround uh, mm, the policy plugin and extend it with an additional check. But this is something inside the policy plugin and not after that, like the approval plugin. Uh, here it's a, a simple Python example that uh, no password is used if, if the user is part of my, uh, the group called my group. Uh, here is how we call it from the sudoers file that, that we are using the Python plugin. We use uh, uh, this uh, Python uh, script and uh, we call this uh, class. We use this class and uh, here uh, we see uh, on the last line that members of the of my group uh, don't have to use a password. And here is a very simple Python example. Uh, with uh, my username hard coded as member of my group, so I can use I can run comments without a password, but anybody else needs to use a password. Uh, 
the last uh, release of uh, Python uh, of uh, sudo 1.9 uh, was made available uh, just two weeks ago, and it added support for change root and change working directory. It means that you can uh, give your users change root access without uh, handing out full root access. And uh, changing the working directory can also can come handy. Uh, like uh, some applications are checking uh, from which directory you are starting it. And this way uh, you can uh, change uh, even to a secure uh, directory uh, without uh, giving shell access to the user. Uh, both of these options need to be enables, enabled uh, explicitly in the configuration file. Uh, and there are multiple possibilities here. Either you can uh, hard code the uh, directory name in the uh, sudoers file. In this case, uh, it's used each and every time uh, when uh, the user is running sudo, or you can make it configurable by the user. Peter, before you move on here, there's a question. Is there a way to do this without needing to be root? Uh, change root? Okay, the, I'm just reading from the Q&A there that uh, someone was saying, is there a way to do it without root? Yes, you don't have to be root uh, to, uh, run CH, uh, to run CH root. Okay, good. And then... Uh, Larry Getz had a question earlier that I missed about five minutes ago. Is this process outlined somewhere online? If so, where? Uh, Larry, if I missed uh, context there, you can ask a question again. Uh, actually, this is uh, almost the last last slide of uh, from my presentation. Okay. So uh, I think I, I, I should I try to finish it up and then uh, return to the question in just about one minute. All right, sounds good. Uh, so, as you could see from my talk, uh, sudo is a lot more than just a prefix. Uh, even 1.8 had many advanced features like uh, digest verification, session recording, LDAP-based configuration and plugins. And 1.9 uh, did uh, a couple of more APIs, central session recording, and uh, my absolute favorite is pl uh, Python plugin support. And uh, here we are, uh, questions. All right, great, thank you. We still have uh, a couple more minutes here. If you have questions uh, and you have access to your mic, you're welcome to use your mic now. I'm not sure how the system is set up here, but if you'd like to ask questions, you can. And then uh, we have the question in the Q&A, Peter, it says to clarify, all of the authentications for sudo were done from the root user. So is there a way to do the authentications without being root? Oh, this is, uh, uh, this is for the uh, sudo pairs plugin, which I showed you. Okay, uh, I guess, at least I guess so. Uh, I haven't tested it. Uh, as far as I can remember from the documentation, it is possible. But yes, I uh, uh, I used root as that was the easiest to set up. As otherwise, uh, as far, uh, it's using a, a control socket, and one needs to uh, set up permissions on the socket. Uh, otherwise, so it was easier for me to do the authentication as uh, root. Great. Uh, Stephen Madrich, I uh, unmuted you. If you'd like to unmute your mic, you, you can ask your question. Stephen, I see that you had asked to be unmuted. I guess I missed that. Okay. So uh, just to um, uh, clarify then, Peter, when... Uh, is uh, can you show your last slide again just to sit up there because it's got resources on it to point to right so they can see yes it. sure 
Sal, welcome. I see you came in there. Good to see you. Here you go. There we go. So people can see that. I think that's important if you want to take a shot at what Peter was talking about. Peter, as you're thinking back over this presentation, what would you like most of all for people to take away? What was your whole concept of why you wanted them to see this? Uh, because uh, what I often uh, see uh, that people are not, not aware of the possibilities uh, and uh, the uh, most users are just seeing sudo as yes i enter sudo before uh, i uh, can uh, do something administrative but uh, don't see how uh, much it can help you to debug what is happening actually on your uh, hosts uh, that sudo is logging everything that you can uh, that uh, giving shell access to a user is not a black hole but you can actually monitor what is happening inside and uh, with sudo 1.9 uh, uh, and as, uh, you can uh, collect these uh, session recordings centrally which gives you additional security and uh, even if i'm not a programmer uh, my absolute favorite is uh, that, that sudo can be extended using python which means that uh, you can easily Add uh, logic which was pre previously impossible, mm, like checking uh, what is on uh, on screen and mm, implement data leak uh, prevention, or uh, analyze the commands executed by users inside the shell. Okay. So lots more possibilities than previously. Yeah. Uh, Larry Getz has a question. Larry, you have the microphone. Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, Peter. Uh, my question was about the documentation or about this process. Uh, I'm assuming, and I'm just looking for clarification, it'll be at that website that's on this slide here? Uh, the sudo documentation is here. Uh, for the Mm, sudo pers plugin that's something completely third party it's uh, not not done by the sudo developers uh, i can dig you uh, mm, the mm, url in a few minutes uh, okay. right off my uh, right after my talk well I'll, I'll shoot you an email just to make sure i can get um stay in touch with you because this this seems like a way of limiting uh, pe people from coming in and acquiring root or uh, acquiring a pseudo account uh, to be able to go deeper and outside the parameters of what they should be able to do. So yes, this is something that, that seems a little interesting with a script of that sort. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's see. Uh, anybody else with questions? You can either use the Q&A panel or just request the microphone and I'll hand it over to you. And other than that, Peter, thanks so much. I appreciate you, you spending the time with us. Uh, let's make sure that the people you know, get that sudo.ws URL so that they can only go and check it out. Uh, and that'll be it. Peter, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.